What's up? Uh, just recording how I break in my pitcher's gloves. So now we're moving on to my first baseman's glove. Uh, things I need for first baseman's glove breaking in. Same thing as pitcher. Uh, ball mallet. Uh, I use a pounding pad, Mizuno. And then I have it on my bucket of baseballs. This makes it easier to be able to have a solid surface. Uh, so for my first baseman's glove, uh, this first time I went with the uh, H-Web. I've ever gone with the H-Web for a glove. I've always had I-Webs for the most part when I was younger. Uh, so for this glove, uh, really different than my pitching glove when I first got it. If you guys watched that video. Uh, for this glove, first thing I did, I learned about hot watering. Not a big fan of it now, but I like how it turned out with this. I didn't want hot water the whole glove, not a fan of that at all. I just did the um, H web because it started getting really stiff. I wasn't able to break it in. It took me a long time to try to break that in, so I just decided to hot water it right away. So I hot watered the web and got a towel, dried everything out, and all that, made sure there wasn't any type of moisture in the glove at all. So that was like one of the first things I did was with the H web because it wasn't breaking in for me pretty well. So uh, I did tuna pink for my first baseman's glove. Uh, when I first got it, I flipped the thumb a little bit, but not too much. I liked having that curve it has, but I don't want to over exaggerate like where it is like goes here and then just sticks out out here. I'm not I don't like how that would be. I think the ball would pop out too much because it how wide the opening on top would be on digs and all that. And then I to bend this a little bit down like that, not much, but just so I'm able to have that curve like. Uh, first glove I want a really deep pocket, so I used two baseballs, one up top because I need to break in the entire. I need like a big pocket, obviously for first base. So I put two gloves in, or two balls in, one right there and one right there, and I just started hitting them with uh, the mallet down into this there, and then with the other ball it'd be up there, and I was just pounding it, and then take them out, do the same thing with no ball and all that, try to deepen the pocket. Uh, for this glove, I conditioned more than my other ones. I feel like. For sure, I use bag balm conditioner, uh, more of natural conditioner in my opinion, compared to some of the other ones like the Nikona. I've heard a lot of good things about that. Forty four. I haven't heard a lot about it, but I assume it's probably pretty good for a forty four gloves. Wrongs has one, I believe. I've been really heard much about that one either. But for this glove, I use bag balm. Or I use for all my gloves for the most part. Um, so this glove, uh, I rolled. I didn't really roll this one as much. My first baseman's glove, like how I did with my pitcher's glove. Uh, I more did the trip, find out like if I went down here, which I wasn't a big fan of, or like up here. Like some people, I went kind of right in the middle, right in there, and then hit right here in this breaking point, kind of point. And then, kind of the same thing right here with, uh, with the thumb side. I didn't do as much on the thumb side because I like, I don't. Because I, the side was already pretty, not already broken in, but already felt like I didn't need to do a whole lot with it compared to this, uh, more of the pinky side of it. And for this glove, I got really bad, uh, air bubble right in here so I would just like kind of like massage it out I guess just with it just having the mallet and just going like this and just moving it and just applying a lot of pressure in there I still have a little bit of one right there not much it's mainly probably it's mainly there because of uh, my hand it kind of just, my hand pushes really hard right there so that's for the main reasons, but I don't, it's not a big deal. I like how it plays and all that. So, there isn't really much on breaking first 
freaking inefficiency skills on my part, as much as a lot of catch, and a lot of just getting a lot of trust in the guard, being able to move it around and all that. Um, yeah, I spent a lot of time just doing a lot of digs to be able to work in the glove and start to trust it a lot, because obviously with all gloves you want to have, you want to be able to trust the glove as much as you can. But first base on glove is a little different. You're receiving every ground ball for the most part on a throw, so you need to be able to catch everything. You can't have anything be popping out from your glove being too stiff. So it's just a lot of mallet work, uh, just moving the glove around how you like it, not like folding it out or anything how some people do, but just just working on it, like with your hand and all that, just pushing it and be able to just form it how you like it type thing. So, yeah, there wasn't much, I as much I did for this glove as of like special, like really anything special. I just did more of the basic stuff and then just bob catch so I started to form my hand a lot more. There goes my mallet. Um, so yeah, there wasn't a whole lot I did besides just the normal stuff that you would normally do, which is fine, you don't need to be extra on all your gloves, just make it how you like it and how you want it to feel, which is my big thing, I don't think you should break your glove how someone always says to you, if it doesn't feel right to you, type thing, so, always remember that, these videos are just how I break it in, not how you need to break it in, so, by saying that, I like to say, uh, thanks for watching the video, uh, Remember to like and subscribe, follow me on Instagram at NCALGloves, same username as here on YouTube, and I'll see you for the next video of breaking in my baseball gloves.